Welcome back to the Road to Emmaus journey. Well, today we're about to get into 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And as we do, I want to share a little story that a pastor friend of mine once shared with me. He told me about a believer that was having a hard time deciphering the will of God for a decision he had to make in the near future. So he made the choice to figure out God's will through the flip to a Bible passage method. Anyone ever do this before? You grab a Bible off the shelf, you throw a quick prayer up to God, and then you kind of flip through the scriptures and you stop and you read the first verse that you kind of point to with your finger. I I know, no one's ever done that before, but this man did just that. He flipped open, stuck his finger in the pages and read the first verse and it said this, it said that Judas went out and hung himself. He stopped and he tried to figure out, how do I apply that to this circumstance? So he decided, you know what, I'll flip again. And he flipped again and he stopped at Luke chapter 10, verse 37. Luke chapter 10, 37 starts like this. It says that Jesus said, go and do likewise. Well, the man was still confused. So he did it one more time and he stopped at John 13, 7. And it said, whatever thou does, do it quickly. I don't think that was the answer the man was looking for. See, the issue with finding God's will for our lives is sometimes it kind of feels like a treasure hunt. And we're trying to decipher all these different clues off of this map so we can figure out our next steps of how to reach our ultimate goal. Uh, We're asking questions like, what church should I be attending? Who should I date? When should I get married? What job should I take? Where should I live? I had a friend said to me one time, he said, how come when I sin or I do something wrong, God's voice shows up like a loud thunderbolt. I mean, I can hear him clearly. He lets me know. But when I'm praying for his will, it feels like he shows up and he begins speaking in whispers. I have to say, what did you say, God? Could you repeat that again? See, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 begins to tell us exactly what God's will is for us, not in a whisper, but with a loud thunderbolt exclamation point. Let me show you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting in verse 3, says this. It is God's will. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. You know what I've learned over my 20 years of walking with the Lord? God has taught me that his specific will for my life only comes and becomes clear as I obey his revealed will for my life. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Michael? Well, the more we obey the clear things that the Bible commands us to do, the more God begins to lift the fog of confusion so that we can begin to understand the unclear things that are not in the Bible that God desires us to do. I think Christians would be in a much better place if they were as interested and as passionately concerned with God's revealed will in the Bible as they were with his specific will for their lives. See, verse 3 tells us, that the clear will of God for us is a life to abstain from sexual immorality. Sexual immorality, we'll just define it. It's real simple. It's just sex outside of marriage. See, listen to me. Saying I love you doesn't make sex outside of marriage okay. Saying, well, we're engaged doesn't make sex outside of marriage okay. It's still wrong according to scripture. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that love is patient. That's the very first definition that Paul gives to love before the rest of the description. Get this, Paul is saying, if you have sex before you get married, your love for each other is actually suspect because love is patient. See, you actually truly prove to a person that you love them by waiting and doing it God's way. You have to understand, God is always thinking about the big picture and we need to recognize that and work towards what could be in the future instead of instant gratification now. When we wait for marriage, before we have sex, we invest into our marriage and into what God has for us on the horizon. And not only that, as we obey God's clear will in the Bible, his voice becomes so much louder for his specific will in our lives. And I don't know about you, I could definitely use with God's voice being a little bit louder in my in his specific will for my life. Um, Spring Church, I love you. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day and rest of the week ahead. We'll be back again shortly to get in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, Go, be blessed, and we'll see you back here again soon.